Hi, and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll be talking about creating progress bars using the horizontal progress bar widget from our key add-ons for Elementor plugin. We are on the widgets landing page, and here we can see some examples of progress bars made with it. There's a wide range of customization options for you to take advantage of. Anything from different bar styles and colors to differing number positions. You can also combine this widget with whatever background you like and easily create your dream design. The progress bars you create with it can have different colors for the text and the lines. You can also make the inactive part of the progress bar line transparent. Alternatively, you can make the active part of the line colored with a gradient and decide precisely which colors can be used so you can easily match your brand colors if you like. Another option with the horizontal progress bar widget is to use images of patterns for the lines and you can also overlap them with text if that works with your design. So let's see how we can create progress bars for ourselves using the horizontal progress bar widget from our key add-ons for Elementor plugin. Here we are on the page ready to get started. To do that we need to find the appropriate widget so start typing in horizontal progress bar. And you don't even have to finish, it appears right away. Let's drag the widget over to the page. And there we are. This is what the default progress bar looks like. Keep in mind, of course, that I'm adding mine to one of two columns, so it looks narrower. If you give it more room, it will stretch out more. Now, the default content is in black. It's composed of the title, the percentage number, and the bar which has the active line and the inactive line. We'll go through the widgets options together in a moment, but first I want to make a few tiny adjustments in the style section. These will help me showcase some of the options we'll be going through. For starters, I'm going to change the active line color so it's a bit less stark. There it is, a lovely shade of blue. Since I'm using a paler color on a light background, it might be hard to spot the changes and options I'll be showing you, so I'm going to adjust the line thickness to make it easier to see. 40 pixels should do it. OK, and I'll do the same for the inactive line thickness. There we go. Now that I have that ready, we can get back to the content tab and start looking at the horizontal progress bar widgets options, beginning from the general ones. For starters, I want to introduce you to the percentage type option. Basically, this option lets us pick the position of the percentage number. Let me show you what I mean. Our default setting is floating above and we can see how that looks on the right. But when we switch it to fixed above, we get the number in a fixed position. Then if we change that to floating on, we have the number floating along the inactive part of the bar. Finally, if we change this to fixed on, both our number and text end up overlapping the bar. Since I think this design is really neat, I'll be sticking with it for this tutorial. And once you decide on your design, you can start customizing this widget's content. So that will be the title, this here. And you can change it by typing over the text here. OK. Then you can replace the percentage number using the field here. I'll set 15%. We have a few more options here, such as enable gradient fill. If we switch it to yes, the active part of the progress bar line gets colored with a gradient between two colors. We also get new options for the colors themselves. The first is the starting color. I'm going to change it to, say, red, just to show you. And the second is the ending color, and I'll make it green. The effect is more striking when you use bolder colors. Alright, I'll reset the values now as I don't intend to use a gradient on my progress bar. After this, we have the option Enable Pattern Fill. This lets us add a pattern image that would be displayed as the inactive line of the progress bar. If this is something you'd like to use on your site, simply switch this to yes, and you'll get a new option where you can upload an image with your desired pattern. Let me show you an example from the landing page. That would be this. The inactive part of the progress bar line shows the pattern image. If you return this to no, the option will disappear. Then we have the animation duration field. This is where we can set the speed of the animation that makes it seem like the bar is loading. The value is in milliseconds, so if I want to speed my animation up, I'll set 500. Now we can see that the progress bar line moves much quicker. 
I'll erase it as I'm happy with the original speed. Our last set of options in the Content tab are Developer Tools. When we open them, we can see there's just one option here. And we can switch its setting to Yes and get it to display the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode, so we get this text. And we can easily copy it for use elsewhere on our site. Alright, that's it. Let's move on to the Style tab and see what options we have in there. The first section is for the bar style, and here we have border type. This lets us create a border around the progress bar line. The default setting is none, so there's no border, but we can change that to solid and get this thick frame around the progress bar line. Alternatively, we can make it double with two lines, or change it to dotted, or to dashed if you prefer, or grooved if that's what you like. Following that, we have the option to adjust the width of the border. If you click here, you will reset the default width values and delink the field so you can enter a different value for each part of the border. But I think all sides of a border should be even, so I'll just show you here how it can look if you make adjustments. Of course, the look is affected by the border type you pick out. Once you've settled on that, you can change the border color too. You'd use this handy color picker. However, for myself, I don't want to use the border, so I need to return this to none. Now, the next two options you might recall from the start of the video. I used the first to change the color of the active part of the line, and the second to change the inactive part. After these, we have some options that can be quite fun. The active line opacity lets us adjust how solid or opaque our active line will be. So, it applies to this blue part of the progress bar. By default, its set is completely opaque, meaning the field value is 1. If we set a 0 instead, the active line becomes transparent and seems to disappear. But if we make that 0.5, it becomes semi-transparent. I'm going to put this back as I want the active part that illustrates my progress to be very visible. But that doesn't have to apply to the inactive part of the line. I'll set a 0 here and make it transparent. The next two options should be familiar as well. I set the active line thickness to 40 pixels at the start, so it's easier to see. And I did the same for my inactive line. But since I've now made my inactive line transparent, I'll erase this value. Following that, we have a group of settings for the text style. The first thing here is the option to pick our title tag. You can set anything from h1 to h6, or even pick the paragraph tag. I'll change mine to h6. As you can see, this change affects both the title and the percentage number. Then we have the title color option. It lets us change the color of this text. You can use either the slider or add a new hex code. I'll keep mine set to its default. After this, we have the title typography options. These let us change things like the font family. You can scroll through this list with a massive selection of fonts or directly search for a font if you know its name. Then we can adjust the font size here. The default value is in pixels, so if you set 20, it trumps the title tag settings. Then we can pick the font weight, so you can make your title bold, or use one of the number values shown here to fine tune its weight. I'll put mine back to default. We also have the text transform option. This lets us change the title to uppercase, lowercase, capitalize it, or make it normal, which is the same as our default. Then the style option. Default and normal are the same as you can see, and we can switch to italic or oblique. The two are very similar. I'll put my title style back to default. The decoration option lets us add an underline, an overline, a line through, or set it to none, which is actually our default. Then the line height can be set here. It's in M's by default, but you can switch it to pixels. I don't have enough text here, so even if I set 3 M's, there's no visible change on the page. So I'll just remove this. Following that, we have the letter spacing option. If I set 2 pixels here, we'll get wider spread letters. I'll erase it since I don't think it looks as nice as the original. And that's it for the typography options. Getting back to the text style settings, the next thing we have here is the title margin. So that's the margin going all around the title. You can click here to reset the default values and to delink them. 
Now we can adjust specific fields without the change reflecting on all four fields at once. So I'll make the bottom margin 2 pixels and for the left margin I'll set 15 pixels. So my title isn't stuck to the start of the active line. Ok, I'm happy with this look. After this, we have the text style options for the number. We can set its color here using this familiar color picker. Then we can use the same typography options we've seen before to customize the appearance of the number. Since we've already covered what these options do, I won't go into them again, I'll just briefly change the weight to 500. There we are. And the final option we have is for the number margin. I'll click to reset it. And I'll change the bottom and left margins to match the ones I set for my title. And that's it. The last options tab, Advanced, has several useful options for responsiveness, positioning, entrance animations and much more, but since it's available for all Elementor widgets and not unique to our horizontal progress bar widget, we won't be covering it in this tutorial. Now, if you need multiple progress bars and you're happy with the one you made, you can simply duplicate it. Right click on it and go to duplicate. I'll make a few more progress bars so you can see how they would look together. But I'll skip ahead with the video because you've already seen the process. And here we are now, my progress bars are all done. You can combine them with other elements or duplicate the entire column if you want. It's up to you to see which of the possibilities offered by this plugin work best with the style and design of your site. And if we look back on the landing page, now with fresh eyes which have seen the options behind this widget, we can see the different things we can do with it and the potential variations we can make. And that's it for this video. Hopefully it has helped you to see how easy making progress bars can be with the key add-ons for Elementor plugin and its horizontal progress bar widget. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about new theme guides and tutorials. Thank you for watching!